I've come to a point where my life was squeaky clean and we've done everything we know to do and there was no sin in my life and there was everything I've cut out. But I said to the Lord, what is the problem now? Because I'm still not getting breakthrough. I'm still having these patterns and, and cycles in my life that's reoccurring and I'm not moving forward. And the Lord gave me a dream as I start crying out to you that was divine revelation. And as I prayed through the dream and as I exercised it, there was a shift and a change. But if I just left and say, Lord, this is just my portion of life. I'm just sure, you know, it's my cross. You know, this is just how it's going to be. Then I would have still been in that situation. And the Lord was saying, cry out and ask me for the wisdom and the revelation. And some people say, but I have prayed through certain things. Some people say, but I have gone through, um, you know, this one prayed with me and I broke this and that. But many times you um, have prayed through things on a peripheral level and not you haven't touched the root of it. And when you're done that, you have temporary release, but then suddenly the root reestablishes, and suddenly you're back in that same cycle. Does it sound familiar? And God says, cry out to me for divine revelation. Part of our ministry is that, um, you know, God can give you a dream. God can speak to you through the word. He can, he, can, he can speak to you in many ways, or he will speak to you through a prophet. So part of God is prophetic is the Lord will show what is keep, keep, keeping people in chains. And people in bondage. So God can use any type of revelation to do that. And there come a time when God wants you to break free. But people say, you know, but Anton, I'm not understanding this because I'm a new creation. I'm born again. All things have passed away and all things have been made new. Christ has become a curse for me. Yes, it's right. This is, this is what the scripture says. But your life, our lives do not display it. Our life does not display the fullness. And... Um, I want you to look at a key that the Lord has given us in the scripture in Hebrews 7 verse 9 and 10, which is a crucial key to answering this problem. We'll see Hebrews 7, 9 says, a person, okay, before you read that, um, this is, in, in Hebrews 7, it tells a story when Abram paid tithes to Melchizedek. Who remembers that? All right, that is, um, that's Genesis 14, 18. He paid tithes to Melchizedek. So what happened when that happened? Paying tithes to somebody is a righteous spiritual transaction. Sorry, just take it off for a while. I just want to lay this one. That this is a righteous spiritual transaction. Everything we do, whatever you say, whatever you do with money, constitute spiritual transactions. It's a natural thing, but it does something in the spirit. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. What we say over our life, it concludes spiritual transaction. Those of you who are in business, you know what a contract is. You know what a transaction is. So whatever you do with your mouth, people conduct spiritual transactions all the time. With their mouths, through money, through actions that they are. And if it's contrary to the word of God, it's an it's, it's a, it's a, um, ungodly spiritual transaction. And the enemy um, gets an open door in your life because of that. So generationally, there's quite a lot of those things. So what happens is, let's read the scripture. Sorry, just put it up again. Okay, let's go. So when Abram gave tithes to Melchizedek, the Bible says a person might even say that Levi, who was in Abram's lineage... The father of the priestly tribe himself received tithes paid through Abram. Next scripture. For he was still in the loins of his forefather Abram when Melchizedek met Abram. So this is a New Testament scripture that says that Levi, which was in Abram's lineage, although unborn at the time of that spiritual transaction, when he gave the tithes to Melchizedek, Levi was part and parcel in real time, part of that transaction, in person, because he was in Abram's loins. This is a New Testament scripture that says, when they made the deal, because, because uh, he was, he, um, Levi was in his loins, he was in real time, part and parcel of that transaction, as if he was there in person at that time. Can you imagine, by default, you know, the opposite is also true. So think about the, the, the demonic transactions of, of, or unrighteous transactions that's been conducted by your forefathers. You were also there present in time. And this is part of the dreams that I had. This is, this is what God said. This is heavenly protocol. I mean, I was amazed when I saw the scripture. I said, Lord, this is it. We don't understand the protocol of heaven. We don't understand the things of the Lord, the mysteries. And we don't understand why can't I get free? And God said, there's spiritual transactions testifying against you that you need to get rid of, so I want to break you free. But Lord, it's not fair. I wasn't even there when it happened. How can this be? This is impossible. I wasn't even born when it happened. That's what people say. This is ridiculous. How can I be held accountable for what they have done? I don't even know what they've done. 
And this is unfortunately how kingdom protocol and the, and, and the system works. Because God sees a family in a generation, not in a family unit. God sees a family in a generation and not in a family unit. I don't know of you, but we, when we go to the doctor in South Africa, we have to fill out a form many times. And they fill out on the form, they said, you know, your name and everything. And then they ask you, do you have any hereditary diseases? Is there anything passing that's coming through the bloodline of diabetes, you know, um, heart problems? And sin works exactly the same. What is true for the natural is true for the spiritual. But people say, I don't understand it. I don't want to understand it. I'm angry at God. I don't know what's the problem. Why am I not getting breakthrough? And this is a key the Lord is giving you today, that there was spiritual transaction that God saw when your father, grandfather, whoever on your mother, your father's side conducted some wrong spiritual transactions through money. There could be blood spilling. There could be um, idol worship in, in a, some shape or form, any, or any sin. That connects a spiritual transaction, and God accounts you as if you were there yourself. According to that. So God wants you to give you a breakthrough. So God says, doesn't matter if you believe it or not, it works. You know? And that's why Hosea says, my people perish or are destroyed because of a lack of? Knowledge. Because of a lack of? Knowledge. This, is, this is knowledge that he's giving us today. Not because of lack of prayer, knowledge. And we don't have knowledge because we are, we are stuck in certain situations. We don't have knowledge about this transaction. That's the problem. And people fight the same battles all their life. You have family members that were fighting the same addictions all their life. The same financial patterns all their life. Everything. Addiction. Sexual sin. They battle it their whole life until they die. They never got a victory over it. Because of the power of that spiritual transaction. And it's easy to break it, but there's a way and there's a protocol to break it. Okay, so I'll talk about that now. So the Bible says, Lamentations 5, 7, just quickly says, Our fathers have sinned and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. Iniquity is the word for generational or foundational sin, bloodline sin that's in the Bible. You know the word? Because he, I'll, I'll come to that now. Luke 11, another New Testament scripture says, uh, Luke eleven forty seven to 50, as uh, three scriptures... The summary of those scriptures says there's a curse upon the righteous because their forefathers killed the prophets. We are righteous. The Bible says, New Testament, there's a curse upon the righteous because their forefathers killed the prophets. So the root causes of our inherited battles that we are battling with, of our financial battles, of our health battles, our relationship battles, sexual battles, all those root problems are these um, demonic or wrong covenants, oaths and agreements that has been cut that is testifying against us. That's the bottom line of it. Yes, so you need to ask the Lord, prayer and fasting mostly won't work to break it. You need to get to the root of it. And you need to ask them, pray and fast to ask the Lord, give me the answer, give me the root. Give me the wisdom and the revelation. What am I battling with? I did and God gave me two dreams, which unlocked. God sent the prophet sometimes. God will do it if you cry out to him, not giving up and pushing forward. And say, Lord, I'm not giving up. I'm not letting you go until you show me what is the problem. I cannot live in the cycles. I cannot live in this, but this is not my life. There's something greater inside of me. There's a greatness inside of me that I know needs to come out. I feel there's something inside of me that still needs to, uh, there's something huge and great which needs to be released into the place where you've given me, and I, I'm not happy where I am. Is it true? I felt like that. I said, Lord, this can't be it. There must be more. And I said, I don't care what it is. I just hold on to God because I know God is faithful. He's a covenant-keeping God. I knew His nature. I knew who He was. And I, I, I steered away from accusing Him and, and, and you know, asking questions because we don't have perfect knowledge. Of him. So this is another reality you might not have known. And today the Lord is revealing it. So those covenants and agreements are cut through words. Uh, blood that was spilled unjustly, sin, idolatry. And this type of stuff will not keep you out of heaven, but it will make your life hell on earth. I inherited battles in iniquity will not keep you out of heaven. It will make your life hell on earth. Yeah, exactly. And we see in 1 Peter 5, verse 8, that scripture, everybody knows it. The Bible says, your adversary... The devil is walking around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. 
The word adversary in the Greek or Hebrew, I don't know which one it is, says uh, that word adversary means one who has a legal case against you. Satan can't do anything about you unless he's got a legal case. You know what a legal case when they take you to court? There must be a basis for it. Otherwise, the court will throw it out, right? He can do nothing unless he has got a legal case against you. That's what that word means. So bring the files. What is the legal case? I don't have time now, but the Lord showed us visions about this pack of files um, that demonic sheriffs almost like comes and, you know, with all the accusations against you generationally and seeking whom he may devour. He's not devouring, devouring everyone. There's certain people. Whom? 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 So thank you, Jesus, that Jesus paid the price so that we can be free. Hmm? He paid the price for everything. And Isaiah 53 says that he paid the price also for our iniquity, which is referring to bloodline sins or this generational inherited battles. What is, uh, he was bruised for our iniquities. What does that mean? The blood is not on the outside, it's on the inside. You know a bruise? No blood on the outside, it's on the inside, which signifies generational stuff or stuff that is, you know, inside the, you know, inside the roots. Hmm? Yeah, under the surface, on the inside generational stuff. Jesus paid the price for that. What Jesus have done is paid the bank blanket price for everything, everything, but we have to apply what he has done for us. It's not automatic. If it was an automatic thing, we all had a, would have had abundant life by now. So the Lord is saying, I've paid the blanket price for everything. And I normally explain it to people who can't understand it to say, well, it's like the Lord has given you a holiday voucher. Okay, unless the vouchers in your and, and if the vouchers in your in your drawer, you can't use it. You can't use the benefits of it. You have to go and appropriate it at the resort to get the benefits of the voucher. This is this is what it says. And some people say, but no, Jesus done it all. Leave me alone. I'm going on like that. I don't want to listen to your stories. No, Jesus has paid the price, but you need to go and apply what he has done to you in your situations. So just quickly, how do we get rid of this um, uh, transactions, this unrighteous or demonic um, spiritual transaction that's been conducted in your life and by your parents and, and great, great parents and up? I mean, there could be stuff going up for 500 years. And the Lord will show you. The Lord is faithful. As you cry out, he will show it to you. Your bloodline or your foundation does not respect your anointing or your calling. I tell you, it's unpredictable in timing of attack, and it's unpredictable in mode of attack. Your foundation or bloodline is ruthless, it's very dangerous, and it doesn't even care if you're a pastor or whatever you are. You wonder why, you know, this guy was so powerful, such a powerful anointing and mantle, but now he died before his time. This man of God, this woman of God. You know, have, haven't you thought about those things? Why? This is the answer. Your foundation or your bloodline. Let's look at scriptures quickly. Can we do it quickly? Okay, the roaster is in the, roaster is in the oven. When we're at home, people say, my roaster is in the oven. I have to go. Okay. Not today. Not today. Quickly, I'm, gonna be, I'm rushing. 2 Kings 13 verse 14 is about Elisha. This scripture says, now Elisha has fallen sick of his sickness, King James Version, of which he died. What does it mean? His sickness. Can he manufacture sickness? People can't manufacture sickness. No. It was a familiar bloodline generational sickness that he died for. But my goodness, he was the most powerful prophet in the world. He was, I mean, he was so anointed when his body was put in the grave and a thief was thrown into the cave years after. The anointing and the residue of his anointing was so powerful still in his bones that that thief got resurrected. Do you remember that story? So powerful and yet anointed, but the bloodline took him out. Your foundation took you out. No respecter. Comes viciously and attacked you. We, we have a thing like demonic time clocks that the enemy has set in the spirit. We've ministered to people and says, my dad died at 49. My grandfather died at 49. That's a demonic time clock. And at the right time, it takes you out. And the thing is that the strong man operating from your family altar, the demonic one, We'll keep you like a dog on a leash. You'll progress a little bit in a certain season. And at some place when you start worshiping God too much. And you start going into new things of God. And becoming more powerful. It will pull you back like a dog on a leash. 
and say, you're not going any further. I'm blocking you. We've prayed for high-level people in ministry that could not get out of regions and influence because of, of, of those contracts. They were demonic spirits. They say, sorry, I've got a contract. And I'm blocking you. You're not getting out of this region to do business. I'm blocking you in this territory. And there's strong man operating on your mother and your father's side from family altars that is blocking you. And the legal right is this transactions. Let's just watch what we say with our mouths because our, our, we live in a voice-activated kingdom. And we are, we are, you know, God spoke things into existence. And we don't realize the legislative power and whatever you have in your life through your mouth. Life and death is indeed in the power of the tongue. And whatever you say, think about that because you are conducting spiritual transactions with your mouth. Because that's how God cuts deals and does things in the spirit through his mouth. The fact that we use documents is a trust issue. But if you say a thing on, on God's calendar, it's what you say with your mouth. So we need to be careful. Are you the prophet of your own destiny? Some people curse their own destiny. Some people curse the enemy, entice you to look at your circumstances, and, you, and he wants you to speak in alignment with that. I'll never be this and that. I'll never blah, blah, blah. And then if you cut those spiritual transactions, the enemy says, I've got legal right. They've made a contract with their mouth. You gave it to him. Can you understand how powerful this is? So I want us to stand and I want us to pray and ask the Lord to come and, and shift these things because you have to come in alignment. God wants to use every one of you in a greater level in this season to release his power through you to do miracle signs and wonders in this season, to demonstrate kingdom rule in the earth realm. Because we're moving to a place in the spirit and, and even in a natural that we've never seen before. With, uh, you know, the third awakening coming and the Lord is doing amazing exploits. But he needs us. He needs you. You are a certain piece in the puzzle that cannot fulfill the role of somebody else. So, oh Lord, I'm nothing. You know, you can, can you use me? I'm so bad. I've done so many mistakes. No. There's something you must do for God that I can't do. There's some... Some little piece in the puzzle, in the tapestry that God is weaving that only you can do. Young or old. You hear me? Young or old. You are not over. Things are not over. Things are not finished and clear. It's not. God wants to use all of you in your sphere of influence to perform those things. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you today for this revelation. I thank you, Lord, that the enemy will not come and be able to steal this in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you, Father, for this word that will fall into fertile ground. I thank you, Father, for the revelation that is coming today, Father, that we can steward that. And we ask, Father, even today, Father, that you come and highlight to us things that has been testifying against us. Lord, I'm asking that you speak, Father, to us in this place, Father. Give us divine revelation, knowledge, and insight, Father, because we don't want to perish because of lack of knowledge. Father, we want to say we're going to try again. Father, we want to say we're going to rise from our prostration and our depression. And we will rise because your glory will be seen upon us. And your glory will shine from us. Because the world needs to see it. And we ourselves have been downtrodden and flat on the ground. And the Lord is saying we need to get up from that this, the prostration and depression. And rise up because he wants to display his glory through us. And many of you who stood and didn't understand but you have believed. And like Lazarus, God is saying his glory will will be revealed through you because you have believed. So, Father, I prophesy fourth day resurrections over people, Father. I declare supernatural turnarounds, Father, even as we pray today, even as we come today, Lord, that you'll come and speak to your people in dreams. Come and speak to them for your prophets. Speak to them for your words, Father. Father, let people come and tell them, Father, even family members, didn't you know about this? Didn't you know about that? And, Lord, and as we repent and as we reverse these transactions, that we'll step into the fullness of our calling and we shut those legal doors. We smash and revoke and reverse those legal transactions, Father so we can move forward father in power and might in the fullness of our inheritance lord in jesus mighty name because this is on your agenda and this is your timeline in jesus mighty name amen and amen